Tracks are pretty underrated when it comes to editing audio. If you've watched my previous videos, you've heard me describe them as containers for your audio. And while that's true, they do a lot more than just hold things for us. To demonstrate a bit more, I'm going to add a second track to the session we created and add a few clips of audio to these tracks. In my first track, which is mono, or one channel of audio, I have a voiceover clip for a project I did recently. In the other track, I'll drag in some music. Some sessions may look as simple as this, music and voiceover. If I hit the space bar to play this back, we'll start to notice a few things. Remote access needs to evolve. Yesterday, only a few remote users needed access to enterprise apps behind the firewall. First of all, my voiceover starts right away, but I want it to come in after the music has been playing for a second or two. That's not a problem. I can hover over the lower and middle half of this region of audio until I see the hand grabber tool. From here, I just need to click and drag the file horizontally along the track until it's sitting where I want it. In this case, that's about two seconds in. Awesome. Now, before we move on, I just wanna point out something about our cursor. Notice that I said to get the grabber tool, we want to be in the middle or bottom half of the region. That's because if I move the tool to the top half, suddenly we get what's called the selection tool, which I can use to highlight and select audio instead of grabbing and moving it. If you've used a document editor, like Word, for example, you know that if something is selected and highlighted like this, we can do things like copy, cut, or delete. We can do those exact things with the same shortcuts in Pro Tools, too. Like, if I want to split this file so I put more time between a specific phrase, I can just highlight a little bit and click Delete, so that way there's a gap between the two files. Or, if I undo that, I can even press the letter B to split that region wherever my cursor is. Either way, I can use the Grabber tool to drag the second half of the region further along the track so it comes in a little bit later than the original recording does. Now, we also have a third tool if we hover close to the middle and edges of a region. That looks like a bracket. This is called the Trim tool. I can use this to click and drag the end of a region in or out to extend or shorten it without having to highlight and press delete. The more you start to edit audio, the more these different tools really come in handy and you start to learn them like the back of your hand. However, some of you may be following along and going, Natalie, my cursor doesn't look like this at all. You're probably right. The multi-select tool is usually on by default when you open up a new copy of Pro Tools and you haven't set your preferences. The different cursor tools are available in this box here, so you can select them one at a time or click on the box that surrounds them to be able to use that multi-select tool. I actually tend to prefer to use these tools one at a time instead of all at once with multi-select. With multi-select, I tend to click the wrong part of the region and make selections or move regions that I don't want to touch. So I move between each tool and use them separately with hotkeys. Just press Command or Control and the numbers 2, 3, and 4 along the top of your keyboard to move between each one separately. That way you don't have to keep moving your mouse up and clicking on them. With that out of the way, I've also noticed that the volume of my music is way too loud. I can't hear the voiceover very well, and we need to turn the music volume down to hear it properly. Now, there are a lot of ways I can do this, and we'll cover more as we go on, but right now, the easiest way I can do this is to come over to the left side of my music track and click on the slider under volume. Right away, I get a little slider that I can drag up or down to raise or lower the volume. This volume only affects this specific track. If I play the session back, the volume of my music is a lot softer but it doesn't affect the volume of the vocals. Remote access needs to evolve. Now let's throw in a different scenario. Say I want the beginning of the song to be loud, but then have the volume decrease once the voiceover comes in. We can do that too, using something called automation. Automation basically means automatic control or telling Pro Tools how to do something for you on its own. We can do so much with automation in Pro Tools, but the easiest way to start using it is with volume. At the very bottom left side of the track, there's always going to be a little arrow like this. This reveals the automation controls, and by default, the dropdown is set to show us the volume control. I'm going to go ahead and expand this so we can really see what we're looking at here. It almost looks like a track of its own, 
but with a line separating an area that's filled in from an area that isn't. To start playing with this, I'm going to switch over to the grabber tool. When I move that tool over the line, suddenly it changes to what looks like a finger pointing. And if I click, I create a point on that line, which I can also start dragging up or down. To demonstrate, I'm going to drag the line up or down here so that we have a diagonal line like this. Now let's play the audio back really quick and watch the volume box here as it plays. Remote access needs to evolve. Okay, did you see the volume go up with the line changing? Pro Tools is controlling the volume level by having the slider move up and down based on the position of the line. So to get the effect of having louder music at first that gets softer when the voice comes in, I'm gonna create the opposite shape for louder volume that gets softer by following the line down here. Now I'll play the audio back and you can hear the effect as well as watch what's happening on the slider. Remote access needs to evolve. Yesterday, only a few Awesome. This is what it looks like to edit audio. Obviously, there's a lot more we can do, but these are the fundamentals you want to have down before we get to anything more complicated. I'll see you in the next tutorial.